Welcome to our lecture online. Here again, we're going to show you another example to help understand the difference between a, a regular derivative and partial derivatives. So here we have the same example as before, where the volume of a right circular cone is equal to one third pi r squared times h. And let's assume that the initial conditions are that the radius is two units and the height is equal to five units. Let's take the partial derivative of the volume with respect to r, which means that one-third pi and h become constant, only the r squares a, is a variable. So that means it would be one-third pi times h, this would all be a constant, times the derivative of r squared with respect to r, which is 2r, and this can be written as two-thirds pi r h. That would be the partial derivative of the volume with respect to r. Now we do the same with respect to h. We take the partial derivative of the volume with respect to h, which means one third pi r squared become constant, one third pi r squared, and only h is the variable. The partial of h with respect to h is simply one, and therefore that's the partial derivative of the volume with respect to h. Let's go ahead and circle that. Now we're going to take the regular derivative of the volume with respect to r. We want to see how the volume changes when r changes. The difference here is that we're not going to keep h constant because if r changes, h will change as well. And presumably, if we presume that the, the ratio of the height to the radius remain the same, then as r changes, h will then change proportionally to the proportion of that it had originally. Notice the proportion between h and r. If I take the ratio, h divided by r is equal to 5 divided by 2, which means that if r changes a certain amount, we expect h to change a certain amount. We expect the change in h divided by the change in r to, be the, to have the same ratio as the original dimensions, which would be 5 divided by 2. And we'll keep that in mind when we take the derivative. Now notice when we take the derivative of this, only one third and pi are constant. So we write one third times pi times the derivative of this product. We have r squared times h. So we use the product rule. We take the first, r squared, times the derivative of h with respect to r. That would be dh dr plus the second, which is h, times the derivative of the first, which is 2 times r times dr dr. Now we're going to write that slightly different. We're going to multiply this here and we're going to reverse the order of this. So this is equal to 2 thirds pi, so 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds pi times r times h, that's 1 third pi multiplied times the second term, plus 1 third pi r squared dh dr. Now let's take a look at that result and let's see what we have over here. Notice the first term, 2 thirds pi r h, is equal to what we have over here. This would be the partial derivative of the volume with respect to r if h was kept constant. So this gives us the same result as the partial of v with respect to r, with other words, keeping h constant. Now if we look at the second term, notice what we get. We get one third pi r squared, which is what we have over here. So this portion of, this, of the second term is equal to the partial derivative of the volume with respect to h, keeping r constant. So in this case, r is equal to a constant, but we also need to multiply it times the dh dr, which is basically how much h would change as r changes, presumably that the ratio stay the same of the right circular cone, which is equal to five over two. So in other words, this portion right here, if we then get rid of that and replace that by 5 over 2, then this would then be the portion how the volume changes as h changes. So all of a sudden, it's not exactly equal to the partial derivative anymore. What we can see then, though, is that when we take the full derivative, we get the two parts that we get when we take the partial derivatives, first with respect to r, then with respect to h, and then we have to multiply one of those parts with the dh dr because we're also realizing that the volume will change differently because the ratios of the rate of the of the r and the h remain the same. We don't keep 
any one of them constant, so we have an additional term that we're dealing with when we take the regular derivative. So now we have a pretty good idea here how we can compare partial derivatives to regular derivatives. We do find that we have the same two parts, but we also have to take into account that there's additional volume changes because as one variable changes, it makes the other variable change as well. And that's the difference between partial derivatives and regular derivatives.